Let's go back to 2010. Roblox was in a strange middle ground phase between their wacky, cartoonish, borderline Lego clone physics game era of the late 2000s and the early 2010s, where they started to take themselves more seriously and the community started to grow exponentially. The front page was dominated by social hangout games like Apartment Life, Iron Cafe, and Robloxaville. And a developer named OneDev2 began taking notes. He created a game named Welcome to the Town of Robloxia in early 2010 that many early players likely remember. As Rob Roblox grew even further in 2011 and 2012, partly due to increased promotion and newfound accessibility, the game quickly became one of the biggest games on the platform for the time, though this wasn't without issues. At the time, Roblox had a huge play-stealing problem. Take infamous examples like Jared Valdez and Julius Coles, developers who were caught multiple times in the early 2010s, reposting games stolen with exploits and getting them on the front page, though there were many more culprits. Welcome to the Town of Robloxia was a huge target for play-stealers at the time. Back in the day, it was relatively common for Roblox staff to steal front page games and use them for private testing purposes. Here, David Bazuki uploaded Welcome to the Town of Roblox here to a play slot that was already uncopylocked, mistakenly letting thousands of players get a stolen copy of the game. In fact, it's still there today in a play slot from 2006, though it's no longer uncopylocked. The same thing happened to Fear, a horror game 1Dev2 made in 2010, though to a much lesser extent. When a huge security oversight let a group of players breach the Roblox admin panel on April 1st, 2012, OneDev2's account was compromised, and tons of Robux and Limiteds were stockpiled onto the account. Amidst the chaos of the day, one of the hijackers used stolen Robux to buy an eerie pumpkin head on OneDev2's account, one of the most sought-after limited hats of all time. That action got OneDev2's account entirely banned, and it hasn't been touched since. Here's where the topic of the chapter comes into play. In November 2011, just months before his account was hacked, OneDev2 released a game called Crash. The premise was simple, spawn vehicles and watch them explode into tons of pieces as you ride them off cliffs, out of the windows of parking garages, and into towers rigged with dynamite. The game was reminiscent of a simpler time in Roblox's history, because at one point, extremely straightforward games like this were commonplace on the front page. In February 2012, the game was made private, and all that's left of it now is a collection of exceptionally obscure, low-quality recordings taken with Roblox built-in screen recorder. Some of these quite literally had zero views when I found them despite being over 12 years old. Five months after 1Dev2 was banned from Roblox, he uploaded a montage of recordings he took while playing Crash to YouTube. The description says, This was one of my games called Crash. It was so fun, but it's gone. Implying that he no longer had the game saved on his computer and couldn't re-upload it to his new account, meaning he couldn't do anything about the game being locked away on his old deleted account. So that's one option down. Unfortunately, there's a minuscule chance that this game was stolen while it was open, as strange as me saying that may sound, because if a stolen copy resurfaced nowadays, it would be the only way to play this game at all. Not only did Crash only have 2,000 visits, despite 1Dev2 creating a game that was once literally the most played Roblox game ever, but it was originally restricted to those who had Builders Club memberships, because yes, that was a feature back in 2011. As a result, most people didn't get to play it when it was first released, and there was only so much time between 1Dev2 opening it up to all players and 1Dev2 closing it. To put this in modern Roblox, Roblox terms, imagine if the creator of Brookhaven had a place open for 6 months, it only got 4 visits, and was closed, never to be seen again. That's basically what happened here. Crash is just one of many examples of an obscure Roblox game that has seemingly vanished from the platform, with no one to re-upload copies and every option for trying to find the game completely exhausted. This next chapter's story starts with Call of Robloxia, a Roblox recreation of the Zombies mode in Call of Duty World at War. Released in early 2011 by Logitech 101, a Roblox developer you may know nowadays for games like Project Lazarus. While broken and closed now, this game was huge at the time. A year later, Logitech 101 was involved in a collaborative FPS project with developer Spooky Fox, called Authority, originally Call of Robloxia Authority. Authority was a team FPS game released on June 16th, 2012, though it had been in the works for up to a few weeks prior. The game itself was a round-based FPS game between two teams, Enforcement and Criminals. The game mostly focused on Team Deathmatch, though other game modes like Demolition were added in the later stages of its development. Authority was a pretty well-made game for its time, and it was rather popular from 2012 to 2014, receiving over 1.7 million visits in that time frame. It peaked in popularity around late 2012 and early 2013, though some stuff had supposedly broken due to Roblox updates at the start of 2014. Authority 
released after receiving consistent updates in early 2014, and rather quickly, its active player base dwindled. From October 2018 to early 2019, unknown individuals made multiple attempts to hack into and compromise Spooky Fox's account, and the account was eventually banned and deleted in the summer of 2019. Authority is a very interesting piece of Roblox lost media, because the game is still public and technically is still playable. The thing is, a round will never start. Initially, Authority was broken by the filtering enabled updates in 2018 that broke a large percentage of old games that had scripts running locally off players' computers instead of the server. This update was meant to prevent exploiters, but it kind of backfired. However, even if Authority was played inside an earlier version of Roblox that wasn't affected by these updates, the game would still be broken, because all of the assets themselves, such as guns and maps, are now lost to time. Instead of storing guns, maps, and other assets inside the game itself, they were all stored as off-sale models on the now-terminated Spooky Fox Roblox account, and grabbed by the game via insert service. Insert service requests would only work with off-sale models if the requests were coming from a game owned by the owner of said model. Models, but because these models are off sale on a now terminated account, they're essentially gone for good. When I asked Logitech 101 about the matter, he said he only had the base RBXL, which wouldn't be very helpful here considering it has none of the guns or maps. Out of all of the authority related assets that were held on Spooky Fox's account, only one map, Hempton Evacuation by George256, added in May 2013, was accidentally left on sale. And as a result, this is the only available asset from the game. This story doesn't have that bad of an ending though, because this year, Year, one of the developers at Rolf published a game called Enforcement, which is currently in beta testing and was heavily inspired by the original Authority from 2012. It's a fast-paced, team-based FPS game with a very similar premise, though with more game modes and unique maps. The original version of Authority, for the most part, is still considered lost media. As I've said before in videos, Roblox didn't have any multiplayer servers for games made by normal users until September 2006. In the summer of 2006, the only Roblox games with multiplayer servers were games made by the admins, like Crossroads, Haunted Mansion, and certain test places. From late 2006 to May 2007, the Roblox games page was split into two sections, games made by the staff and games made by ordinary Roblox users. To see previews of what the Roblox website looked like in 2006, I'm using a service called the Wayback Machine, which which display snapshots of websites from different periods of time. For years, the user games section on 2006 archives of the games page was thought to have been completely inaccessible information. Because it wasn't its own page, clicking the user games button would trigger a JavaScript command that showed the user games on the page, though this doesn't work on the archive. However, it was recently discovered that because Roblox's website was built on Microsoft's ASP.NET website framework, the data that tells us what the most popular user-made games were at the time of the archive can be viewed through what's called a view state. The view state is a usually encrypted string inside the source code of pages built on ASP.NET that contains even more data that isn't visible to the user. When decoded, it can tell us what user-made games were being played at the time of the archive. On the 9th of December 2006, two brick battle style fighting games made by Flamestorm22 and Tadat22 were being played by small groups of people. They were named Brick Battle Holy Grounds and Brick Battle Afterlife respectively. These games are both lost to time, though because of their extremely cryptic names, they're pretty intriguing to me, despite knowing that they're likely extremely bare-bones fighting maps made out of the digital equivalent of Play-Doh and construction paper. On February 17th, 2007, former creative director Shedletsky had a game open called The Artifact. No idea what this is. Two weeks later, Shedletsky had another now-lost game on his alt account, Son of Seven List, called Catapult Assault. Again, no idea what this game is, and we don't even have screenshots or thumbnails to show us what these games looked like. Because these games were all replaced by new games shortly after their creation, and because the version history feature on the website to see earlier versions of games didn't exist yet, these games are likely lost for good. Before I round off this video, I want to take some time to talk about the pieces of Roblox Lost Media that, while interesting, I wasn't able to dedicate a whole chapter to. In 2008, Minish was known for being a talented developer who made builds that were intricate and detailed for the time, such as Kranos, Aldaker, and Shrine of the Fallen Hero. But for a brief period in late 2008 and early 2009, she made tons of one-off clickbait games to get Robux fast. This idea must have worked really well considering the pizza topping one received over 11,500 visits in the first two days. 
days, which was impressive for the time. These games only lasted on her profile for about a week, and all that remains of any of them is a small array of screenshots that were used as thumbnails. Considering Minish left the Roblox community entirely after she was IP banned in 2009, these games are likely gone for good. On the 25th of April 2007, Shedletsky temporarily opened a game called Roblox Photo Ops on his account, and held a small photo shoot for a promotional post on an online forum called devmaster.net. This was the resulting photo, and the Photo Ops game was closed just hours later. The game itself is a modified version of Grey City, another game that Shedletsky made and uploaded to an alt account in 2006, modified to contain billboards, detailed trees, different weapons, and a different color scheme. This version of Grey City is lost to time. In a previous video I made called the Roblox Lost Media Rabbit Hole, I talked about a variety of lost games, and in the 6 months that have passed since I posted that video, we've been able to recover a large chunk of the games that I talked about in that video. Last July, I got in contact with Stickmaster Luke, a developer you're most likely familiar with because of Natural Disaster Survival, and he republicized a large chunk of his lost games from 2008 to 2010, including but not limited to, Stickmaster Luke's Obstacle Course, a troll obby that's so much more painful than it looks, Covert Ops Shade of Night Sniper Fight, a free-for-all shooter where players fight to death in a dark forest with snipers. This one lasted less than three months before being replaced by a different game. Instagib Fight in the Fog, another FPS game similar to Covert Ops where players fight in a foggy forest with laser paintball guns that insta-kill your opponents. This one was available on and off until 2014 before it was closed and later broken by Roblox updates. And to round off the most important Stickmaster Luke related finds, we now have a copy of Combat Initiative, a collaborative FPS game he made with the now banned Roblox developer Pyro in 2009, which was rather advanced for the time considering most of the games on the front page during this era were games like Slide Down 9999 Miles for free admin. On top of the newly found Stickmaster Luke games, I was able to recover several deleted Roblox videos that were uploaded to YouTube in early to mid-2007 by the users Nintendo250 and Flesk Jerta. While he wasn't the first to upload Roblox videos by any means, Nintendo250 was one of the first YouTubers to consistently upload Roblox-focused content for multiple years years at a time. Being a pretty active Roblox YouTuber from February 2007 all the way to August 2009. Sadly, a lot of his early content is lost media, because of his original channel being terminated for copyright infringement in June 2009. One of his videos that I was able to recover within the last few months was called Cookie Tribute, originally uploaded to YouTube on the 22nd of June 2007. This one was preserved when the Wayback Machine took a snapshot of Nintendo 250's channel two days later on the Italian version of YouTube. It shouldn't be under stated how old this footage is too. According to a forum post Shedletsky wrote at the start of May 2007, there were only around 70 Roblox videos on the site's YouTube and Google video combined, and out of those 70, we only have about 23. So Cookie Tribute is likely one of the first 100 Roblox videos ever. The second most interesting video related find was Roblox Crazy Train, a Roblox music video uploaded by Flesk Jerda in September 2007. The video was left private on his channel for years due to its copyrighted music, but thankfully Flesk Jerda gave me a copy of the video to preserve elsewhere. The last Roblox related find I'd like to talk about is Moon Exploration, a previously lost game made by Clockwork in August 2007. In May, I discovered an uncredited copy of the place file from 2008. A user named Scream0013 reposted it under the name Moon in April 2008, but it was made private in October of that same year. Thankfully, the place slot was left uncopylocked for anyone to take. The game itself is Clockwork's spin on a Shedletsky game from 2007 called Mission on the Moon, a classic space-themed exploration game with the gimmick of only allowing players to play if they were wearing the astronaut helmet hat. Here, the map is much smaller, but it includes a lot more detail. If any games I mentioned in this video are somehow found, posts about it will be made on my community tab and my Twitter account. As well, I started an extra channel for re-uploading lost, deleted videos I find, including the videos that I talked about earlier in this chapter. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, do things you do after you've finished a video you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.